Uh, I believe that song best sets the tone for our message this morning. And I pray that that will be your prayer and mine every day. That Lord, let my life be a praise to you. Not what I do, not uh, uh, some of the things I do when I, when I minister, not this, but our entire life would be a praise to God. We can't piecemeal stuff. We can't, we can't say, okay, um, my, my uh, going to church is a praise to God. Or my, uh, when, I, when I serve God, that, that's a praise to God. Or when I, when I am faithful with, with my ministry or with, with my, my finances to God, you know, that's a praise to God. And then piecemeal yung iba, the others can, I can keep for myself. It doesn't work that way. The, the, the actual mandate is that our entire, our entire life, everything that we do, we live and breathe as a praise and a worship to God. That when we look at things that way, that would entail the way we handle ourselves with others. The way we handle ourselves when it comes to people who don't know Christ. When it comes to people who are in the body of Christ. You know, um, that's exactly the situation in uh, Colossians. We studied uh, about we started about two weeks ago as a continuation back to the Word as to how the Christians ought to live, and then how the Christians ought to live even within the context of the church. Paano ba yung prescription as to how we should live as Christians so that we could be effective? So we could be effective. Acts chapter one verse eight. Before ascending into heaven, Jesus said, Sabi niya, well, all power is given unto me in Matthew 28. And then in, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he says what? Before he ascends, Sabi niya, and when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will be my witness, martyrias. Now that comes from the English word, uh, where uh, the English word martyr is derived. Dun galing yung martyr. It means witness. Often when we think of martyrs, we think of people dying. Dying for the cause of Christ. But the word witness or maturias uh, in the Greek was given to people who followed Christ so that all the way to the end of their life, they testified for Christ. Kaya po binansag yung witness or maturias dun sa mga namamatay. But it doesn't necessarily mean that when you're a follower of Christ, you need to die physically. It does mean, however, that you do need to die to yourself. It does mean, however, that when you, need, when you die, you die to yourself. It's kind of like being married. You know? Some mga singles dito, I've always said to the singles, if you are looking for someone who will complete you, fill your needs, give you what you, what you desire, um, uh, when you need it, what you need, you know, fulfill your every fantasy about being married. Please don't get married. Just buy a dog. Just buy a dog. Bili ka na ng aso. Because dogs, you know, you step on their tail, they'll cry. Tapos they'll go away. And they come back, they'll wag the same tail. So just get a dog. Don't get married na lang. Wag ka na Okay? It's kind of like getting married. When you, when you get married, you... What? When you wake up in the morning, you've got your plans. And you've got it all set up, right? Right. And your husband or your wife wants to do something else. Do you say, abide, this is what I want, and this is what I had planned, and la 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 la. No, that's, that's actually a bad setup. You're setting yourself up for trouble. I mean, you can get what you want, but you won't get what you want. You know? Para kang pinagtampuhan. Have you ever eaten with someone who's not in the mood? I mean, you could be eating a steak in Manila Hotel. You know, Champagne Room, Manila Hotel. I mean, that, that 4,000 peso steak that they have there, you know. And it tastes like this beef from Bonnie Market. Ama, kasi yung mukha nung kasama mo And then you have this intermittent size. <sighs> You know, you might as well just buy a barbecue stick just a bit, a bit, a bit, you know. It's the same. Pareho lang, 
Diba? Exactly. When you, when you get married, you give up stuff. You give up stuff. Ama? You give way. You give up. Ama? So in, the, in the single says, where's the nearest pet shop? Tama pala si Pastor, makabila ng aso. Bira. Ganun pala kahirap yun. No? Yeah. I mean, you know. And, and that's what we're being called to do. Maturi has to be a witness. Sorry, right hand. A, be, a witness to what God, uh, to what God wants us to do and it's done in our life. That's what we're supposed to be as Christians. Now, many people think, well, witness, so that means, you know, I got to go out and do some like soul winning stuff. Nothing wrong with that. Tapos, then I got to preach like pastor, then I got to go to seminary, tapos mag Bible school, to seminary, and then get my college, you know, in, in, in theology, and then get my master's and get my PhD. I understand, been there, done that. That's not God's requirement. The Bible says, when the Holy Spirit has worked in your life, I'm not saying those are not important. Okay, I am an educator, as many of you already know. Importante lahat yon. But first and foremost, the most important thing about being who you are in the sight of God, as a child of God, okay, is that your entire life would be a witness, a maturias for God. In the church of Colossus, this was exactly the problem. It could be so frustrating for Paul because Paul was in jail. Nakakulong si Apostle Paul during Colossians. And so as he was writing Colossians, he was in jail. He says, I am in chains. He wasn't just in jail. There was a big centurion guy, you know, tied to him for several years. No, medyo matagal, right? And the church of Colossus was fighting. They were fighting. And I mentioned to you the reason why they fought. But before I do, let me again explain to you why we are here. We are here on a mission to accomplish the Great Commission. Kaya ka nandito. Hindi para maging magaling na doktor. O bugado, arkitekto, nurse, or whatnot. Those are all important. Okay? But kaya tayo nandito. Okay? Kaya tayo nandito sa mundong ito is to accomplish the commission of God which is to go into all the world and make disciples. So simple and so plain. So simple and so plain. The elections are coming next month. Again, I will say, okay, again, I will say, again, I will say, if you are hoping for a president to turn this country around, you are already in the wrong. First of all, please do not use the same standards on choosing your political people as that of your choosing who your pastor should be. You're not electing a pastor. In fact, if a pastor runs for president, he ceases to be a pastor. He needs to be a president. Tama? Tama? If a Satanist has a birthday party next door and he's the mayor or the president, the pastor president, mayor pastor, has to go to the Satanist next door and greet them a happy birthday. Bakit pastor? Hello, presidente nga eh. He becomes the president of the most evil cult in the Philippines. Because why, pastor? Because they're Filipino. And he's the Filipino president. So wag niyong gamitin ang standards doon. Pastor, I'm looking for a president who is a Christian. That already takes everybody out. <laughs> so don't get involved with all this brouhaha. Okay? Who do we vote for, Pastor? Pastor, you should run as president. I can't. Because then I would have to stop pastoring. Are you getting my point? Because God has never turned the country around because of one man. Huh? This is what you call post, I know, the apostolic age. Huh? <laughs> okay? When the disciples and the apostles began to start churches after Antioch, God has never used one man to change the entire country. Never. 
It's always been that the church needs to be the church. When the group of people who call themselves followers of Christ become the Christian, na dapat silang maging, things will change in a country. My problem with the church today, here, okay, here, and even in the States, okay, my problem with the church today is the church today has become everything, lahat ng bagay that people want it to be except what the Bible says it should be. That's my problem. That's my problem. Yun ang problema ko sa church. No? Lahat na ginawa eh. It's become a political arena. It's become ganito. It's become ganyan. It's become ganito. I mean, the church should say something about these things. But it's become everything else except what it needs to be. There is a body of Christ. Controlled and moved by the Holy Spirit. That brings change. Look in the Bible. That's the only time na naging effective ang church. The church could be the most persecuted body like it is today and even more so back then and still make an impact in society because it's the church. I said last week, kahit na daming mga tao don't like the church, hate the church, all you need to have is one major calamity. And who do they look to? Yes, Christian organizations. A lot of orphans. Where's Compassion International? Christian organization. Where's USA? Christian organization. Puro Christian organization yun. Tama? Exactly. So, so, you know, we're on a mission to accomplish the Great Commission. But the problem of the church is this. And this is the problem ng Church of Colossus. Now, let's run back and review kung problema. Because I want you to relate to the problem because that's the problem of the church today. The first problem of the Church of Colossus, they were fighting. They were fighting. It was a big church. The church of Colossus, a laking church neto. And they were fighting inside, inside the church. Okay? Because one part were Jews. Christian Jews. And the Christian Jews said this way. The other part were Gnostics. Gnostics was knowledge, spiritual guys, you know. There were two problems in the church. The first problem is over-spiritualism. The Gnostics believed if you will understand it, it will become empowering power to you. Right? So all of them were like, you know, doing this and that and theology and so forth and so on. And damning emphasis on knowledge and knowledge and knowledge and knowledge and damning emphasis, you know, because the more I know, the more spiritual I become. Does that sound like the church today? The church today is replete and dame inside the church who have so much knowledge about the Bible. So much knowledge on theology. Ang galing, daming alam. Seminary trained, IBL trained on our side, you know. And daming knowledge, right? And so stinking and spiritual. Bakit, pastor? Because they don't apply the word. Everything has a verse. Everything is prayed over. We judge people by, by the number of applications of biblical verses that we have. That's what they did. The Gnostics. Daming alam. Ang gagaling. And so ineffective. Pastor, are you against knowledge? No, I'm not. Again, I'm an educator. I mean, you know, I've, I've studied all the way to the end and I'm back studying still. I don't know why, but it's back studying. Bakit ba? Because, Pastor, you're so spiritual. No, I just love to study. I want to know more. I'm not the most studious person. That would be my wife. But I love to know more. But this is one thing I've, I've, I've noticed. No? Ang daming mga tao na ang daming alam. Pagdating sa lahat ng bagay. But so unspiritual. Living without the wisdom of God. Judging, reacting. I hate myself. Another problem is this. Huh? Over-spiritualism, and then it's legalism. I have issues with this one. Legalism and when we put a set of rules. Let's just put a set of rules. 
what you can wear, what you can read, what you can do this. If you can comply with the rules, da 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 spiritual ka, yes. If you read the right Bible, you wear the right clothes, you follow the right ganito, and you ganito. And I understand standards, okay, I get it. Naintindihan ko po yung standards, okay? Okay, I understand standards. Even in church, we have some standards in our church, especially those that get up on this part. No, we have clothing standards for people who get up here in the front. Why, Pastor? Can I wear a skirt that this is that's this short? No, you can't. Why? Because you're on a stage, and when you're on a stage and you wear a shirt this short, and you are higher, it gets this short. Hello. Common sense. It's not spiritual. It's just common sense. Okay. Um, brains, you know, brains. Let's, let's use them occasionally. Otherwise, Jesus would have just given us a flower vase up there. Okay? It's not for decor. Common sense. Somebody once told me, you're not a real church because... In your communion, you don't use real, you know, um, yeastless bread. You use sky flakes. I said, because we're social. So you're not spiritual because you're not using real wine. I'm afraid to use real wine in this church. Why? Some people might bring pollutant. Come on. Get a bunch of rules set. But a spiritual ka. That was the problem with that church. And because of that, the problem of the church, the church became useless. It trapped in minor issues. Fails in its true mission. A bunch of churches today, including sometimes. My prayer is against that in this church. Look at Colossians chapter 4. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, it's Apostle Paul saying, pray with us that one, God may open a door to, door to us. For the, for the what? Not to escape. For the word. God will open a door to escape. No, door for the word. To declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison. This is what he says now. That I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. And then he outlines what it means to live responsibly. Bilang Cristiano, eto da, Apostle Paul says. Conduct yourselves wisely toward outsiders. Making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious. This is coming from a guy in prison. I don't know. If you put me in prison because I preached the gospel, man, the Holy Spirit is going to have to do some kind of a work. Because, you know... <laughs> Yeah, I'll be calling some of my guys. Yeah, I'll be calling some guys, you know. Making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious. Seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. We, we look just last week we said righteous investments making a difference. First we have to learn how to pray. Most of us, when we pray, we pray for what we want. That's not what Apostle Paul said. Huh? Sabya, be steadfast in prayer. Be purposeful or watchful in prayer. And then I'll dwell on this one now. And then he said this, conduct yourselves wisely. Ano ba yung pastor? What is wisdom? Wisdom, okay, wisdom, all right, is knowledge from above. That's wisdom. Wisdom is not what you think is right. It's what God says it's right. Ulep. Wisdom is not what you think is right. It is what God says it's right. What the Word says. Remember the series is back to the Word. What the Word says is right. I have a problem with many Christians who are too wise, but in the case wise, wise. We have to go back to what the Bible says. Now remember, this is church fighting. Bakit, Pastor? Look at it. Let your speech be filled with grace. I, I love the word grace because that's a Greek word, charis. Charis in the Greek means grace. 
Okay, charis in the Greece in the Greek means grace. Okay, conduct yourselves wisely, wisely, wisely. What does that mean, Pastor? What does that mean? It means it's a divine influence. It's a divine influence. Notice what I said here in divine influence. In John chapter uh, 4, verse 34 and 35. Would you go with me there? And um, Let's use the NLT. John chapter 4, verse 34 to 35. This is what Jesus says about how we should live. Look what it says. So, and Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the, ano? the will of God who sent me, what? And from finishing his work. That's it. My nourishment, what I eat. We will tell you something about what, what my nourishment. The other day, um, we had the privilege of, uh, of helping our satellite church who has a camp in Pasamba. They decided to choose a place in the Philippines where Google can't find it. Waze doesn't know where it is. I mean, and Facebook thinks it's in the middle of McKinley. It's somewhere sa back road ng Florida Blanca. Pampanga. Okay? Now, the map knows Florida Blanca. The map no, does not know Wilma's Garden Resort, ek, 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 whatever that is. I could not find it. And my wife keeps telling me to go to San Marcelino. I'm not thinking, wow, San Marcelino, alam ko, sambalis yun eh. Bataan. Yung pala, San Nicolas, San din naman, tama, isa, San. E na sa Pilipinas, ako lahat ng bagay, San eh. Santos, Santa Ana, diba? everything is a San. So, so, you know, uh, so we go and look and we, we drive, but the night before I had to really, really study because I had a, a quiz last exam, homework, ganyan, on the Friday, a Thursday lang. So Wednesday, I studied really, really, really hard, went to bed at about 2 or 3 in the morning, and then we had to leave at about 6.37 in the morning, so very little sleep. So we drove all the way, no problem, smooth, no problem. The problem is going home, going home, Okay. Problem is going home. Going home meant that I would still have to drive. Convoy kami ni Pastor Rigor had to drive for about three hours coming home. Okay? Yun ang problema. Kasi about maybe less than an hour into the drive, pagod na ako. As I was sleepy. As I was sleepy. So, naturally, I opened every junk food that was there. I mean, from banana chips to Doritos to, I don't know what else was there. Uh, I mean, I drank coffee, and I drank coffee, you know. Uh, coffee and Coke Zero, Sprite Zero, Zero Zero. I mean, I'm just like, just a stay away, just eating. I'm not, I don't even, I, don't, I can't even taste it. I'm just, you know, putting in, you know. But my wife, she went, went to, was up at 4 a.m. helping Silene Atiche, sa camp. So they were, they were so tired, I wasn't going to wake her up. You know, pagod na pagod na sila. So she would just say, babe, okay ka lang. And I'm like, oh, I'm fine. Okay lang ako. You know, we're safe. You know, and I was driving straight, but why? I was like, you know. And every time she would wake up, I would just be like, clapping. la, 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 la. And I was like, I was so sleepy. So brought to na. Well, we got home, obviously. We got home. We got home. But man, I ate like a bag of Doritos in a bag of, I haven't had that much junk food in, at one time in years. right? We get home at 5.30 in the morning. There was an alarm. When we got home at 3 o'clock, there was an alarm. Where was the alarm? In my stomach. It was an alarm. Get up! There was an alarm. <laughs> and I, Went to the bathroom, CR, 5.30, 6.45, 7.00, and I had class that morning. So I pull out of the garage, ready to go. I take almost the first turn, and sabi nung chan ko, alarm! And I'm like, Lord, I'm already out of the garage, you know. 
So I had to back up into the garage. And that, by that time, it's like, alarm, 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 alarm. It was like a five alarm, you know. Grabe. That was bad nourishment. I wish I had that while driving, I promise you. I makatulog. Malamig na I had beaded sweats, you know, coming from down there. I, I told, and my wife was like, oh, you're back. I have to go back. <laughs> Between 5.30 in the morning to like 7, I think I went to the bathroom six times. My body was rejecting everything. Everything. Ayonya, that had to go. Why is that? Why do you say that, Pastor? To gross me out notes? Bad nourishment. Bad nourishment. Just bad nourishment. I had so much acid from the junk food. I was refluxing. Lahat ng klaseng acid na doon kulang lang muriatic acid. I mean, I, I, it felt that way, you know. I mean, grabe! Acid talaga! I mean, it was coming up here and coming out the other end. Kulang lang lang basa tenya ko. It was like, ah, I was just dying. Bad nourishment! My nourishment could not get me the job to do the job I was supposed to do. We were called to accomplish the business of God. And if you're going to accomplish the business of God, what you listen to, what you watch, what you eat, who you relate to, will either help you to accomplish the work of God. I don't care who they are, spiritually. I don't care if you look up to them. But if they're not helping you accomplish the work of God, that's bad nourishment. Kahit sino pa yan. Kahit close friends mo yan. Kahit mentors mo yan. Huh? If those people are not leading you, if what they're saying is hindering you, even as I speak today, from accomplishing the will of God, that's bad nourishment. Bad nourishment. Jesus says, we need to live, pag sinabi, conduct yourself wisely, it means to live with the divine influence of the Holy Spirit. And I love how they said that. Conduct yourself wisely. You wisely meant it was a divine influence. You know what's a divine influence? That means it's an influence from your commune with God. Not even your commune with your pastor. From your commune with God. From your commune with God. Sa pakikitungo mo sa Panginoon. Look what it says. Led upon the heart. Huh? A divine influence led upon the heart. A realization to live under His influence daily, every moment. Now, be careful how you live among outsiders. Now, Interesting, because I use another set of verses there. No, this is John chapter four, verse thirty-four. In John, but the verse, John chapter four, verse. My food is to do the will of Him that sent my nourishment. That's what He says. Verse thirty-five. This is the next verse. This is often associated with, I uh, know, with uh, like like uh, great commission, soul winning. But look what it says. You know the saying: for months between now and planting and the harvest. But I say to you, wake up and look around. The fields are already white unto harvest. Jesus was talking about, niya, look at the, he drew an analogy, comparison. Sabi niya, eto yung harvest, you think it's still far away, matagal pa yung ani. Pero yung ani, eto na. Ready na yung harvest. What was he saying? Does he, God need help? No, God doesn't need your help or mine. What he's saying is this, the fields are white unto harvest. Be careful how you live. Bakit, pastor? Because when the harvest is white, listen, pag yung harvest daw, yung, yung uh, uh, palay, putok na. Okay? Putok na, puti na. Puti na. Sa mga magsasaka dito. That is the wheat. When wheat becomes ready to harvest, it becomes white. Now, ang ginagawa nila dyan, no? they will harvest it by hand, being careful with the stalk. Ngayon, medyo modern na. They use a tractor. They Kinukuha yung ano, palay, no? But the thing is, sabi ni Jesus, be careful how you live now. Bakit? Because if you live as a Christian, 
carelessly in the world. Huh? What happens if this is a field and I begin to walk like this? That means grains will fall. Tama? Careless eh. Leave it there. That falls. Careless. Daming Kristiano careless. Daming Kristiano careless. You worried about the kalat? Babasal too big? I'm worried about the flower. Dami Cristiano careless. Imbis na gawin yung tama, kampi-kampi. Imbis na ayusin, gumugulo. Imbis na sumunod sa tama, sumusunod sa kakampi. Kamag-anak, kasama sa trabaho, asawa, I don't care who it is. Pag-asawa mo yan, mali yan, mali yan. Anak mo yan, mali yan, mali yan. Huh? Mali yan. Mali yan. Suportahan mo. Samahan mo habang pinaparusahan sa'yo ng Panginoon. Okay lang yun. Be there for your family. Okay? But if they're wrong, they should be wrong. If they're your kids, and they do wrong, let them be disciplined. Because they're wrong. Don't tell your kids, nasama ka lang sa barkada. That's the lamest excuse I've heard parents say, and I'm a guidance counselor. Oh, they're just like that because they were around bad company. Was there a gun pointed to their head so they could be with bad company? Huh? Parents whose kids make a mistake. Oh, my kid made a mistake. I said they were in a bad relationship. It's not their fault. No, no. It was their fault because they were in a bad relationship. Kunti lang amen ko doon. Live wisely. Because if you live carelessly, the people around you notice if you live carelessly, pag wala kang pakailam, what you say, what you do, how you live, you don't damage the neighbor's huh? The neighbor's field. Tama ba? If I live carelessly, do I hurt the neighbor's field? No. I hurt my field. If I speak carelessly, if I move carelessly, if I decide carelessly, if I decide not based on truth, now, if I'm not a peacemaker, who do I hurt? Do I hurt the field ng neighbor? No, I hurt my field. The people that God has placed around me that I'm supposed to impact for Jesus. That's who I hurt. Pag wala kang pakundangan kung paano ka magsalita, Kung mapanakit ka magsalita, kasi prangka ka, at wala kang pakundangan kahit sinong tamaan, do you hurt the field of someone else? No, you don't. You hurt the field that God has placed you to work in. You know what happens to white harvest? Palay na hinog, tapos careless kang magsalita, careless kang gumalaw. It falls to the ground and it's wasted. Yeah, maraming Christians, maraming, you know what, the, and that's the problem with the church today. Church is careless. That's the problem with the church. That's the problem with the church. That's the problem with the Christian. No? Pasayahin lahat ng tao para wala ng problema. Church is careless. Let's look for which candidate will will help us do what we need to do. Church is careless. I think we should worry more about we impacting the candidates for Jesus before we worry more about getting their support. We should not desire that to begin with anyway.
living with a divine influence. Conduct, notice what it says. Conduct yourselves wisely toward outsiders. Now. Now. As in, now, Jesus said, now. Because they're already white. Live. Lastly, live with wisdom. Live with wisdom. Because he said, conduct yourselves wisely. Pastor, how, how do, okay, I need to be careful how I live, how I speak, how I relate. Get that. I should be careful how I live. Got that, okay? Um, I need to be ng wisdom, Pastor. James chapter 3. James chapter 3. And I'm going to start with verse 13. If you are wise and understand God's ways, notice what it says, prove it. This is now written to Christians. Prove it. Patunayan mo. Prove it by living an honorable life. Doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. The humility that comes from wisdom. Verse 14. But if you are bitterly jealous, if there is selfish ambition in your heart, you know what is selfish ambition? You want to accomplish something. Okay? Don't cover up the truth by, with boasting and lying. 15. For if jealousy and selfishness are not in God's kind of wisdom, such things as are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Hmm. Earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Ano sabi natin how you should live? Live, ano daw? Guided by the Holy Spirit. So if you are allowing speech, jealousy, or meron kang gusto mong i-accomplish, by doing selfish ambition, and doubt those things are earthly, unspiritual. What strong word? Demonic, G- James says. And demonic. Verse 16. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil in every kind. Now I want you to assess. Assess your relationships today. Assess that today. Is there disorder? Some of you are defending. I sense the defense. Some of you say, no, pastor, there's disorder because someone caused it. No, 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 no. You won't get away with that because verse 17 is coming. Magaling si Jesus. Alam niya yung reasoning natin eh. Pastor, magulo yung buhay ko ngayon and there's disorder and evil of every kind because someone caused it. No, 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 no. Can't get away with that. Hindi pwede. Bakit, Pastor? Kasi sabi niya eh, Pastor, you mean to tell me if there's disorder in my life, if there's evil existing in my life, I'm part of the cause. Yes, you are! Pag merong disorder at kaguluhan sa buhay mo, parte ka nun. Bakit? The Bible says there's no confusion or disorder in God. Pastor, justify. Verse 17. Because the wisdom that is from above is first pure, is also peace-loving and gentle at all times, willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and good deeds. It shows no favor, no favoritism. It's always sincere. So let's judge your wisdom, shall we? I want you right now to assess. Before, as I close, this is like a, I normally close quietly. This is like a big closing. Okay, I want you to assess your decisions lately. In assess mo nga, right now, in your heart, in your heart, with the contents of your heart, I want you to assess your decisions as of late. Was it pure? Eh, pastor, that's easy. Of course it's pure. Let's test purity, peace loving. Your mga decisions mo lately. Was it an attempt to make peace? But pastor, it's not my fault. Oh! Wisdom from above. Remember, if it's causing disorder and you're not seeking peace, you're wrong. Pastor, are you saying I should not confront wrong? No, you should confront wrong. In our church, I've always believed first to love, 
First to, to discipline, first to restore, first to love ulit. Are your decisions chasing after peace? Understand what I'm saying. Don't be defensive because the Bible says it will reveal, the, the Bible reveals the thoughts and intentions of your heart. And right now, I believe that the Bible is revealing thoughts and intentions to the hearts of people as I speak right now. If you try to defend, that is your Huh? Your responsibility to God. If you say, well, pastor, I will be peace-loving when so-and-so becomes peace-loving, when so-and-so apologizing, you're not peace-loving. Bakit, pastor? Because gentle at all times, let's read it all together. And take the spike, drive that sucker in. Willing to yield to others. Drop that life. Willing to yield to others. Ibig sabihin, handa magbigay daan para makipag-usap. Question. The decisions you've made lately, have you desired to speak and clarify things before you pass judgment lately. If you've not made a desire or an attempt to yield and to go into speaking terms with people, I'm sorry, the Bible says that is, from de that is demonic. Because if you're not willing to speak and give way, that is earthy, unspiritual, demonic. You mean to tell me, Pastor, that if I believe they've done wrong, I, I should still speak to them. Earthly, spiritual, demonic. The Bible says, willing to yield. Ibig sabihin, kahit na alam mong mali ka, kahit na alam mong tama ka, you're still willing to listen. Bakit? Because you're peace-loving. Are you saying, Pastor, I'm only one of two. I'm either being a good Christian or earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Hindi ako nagsabi niyan, ikaw. Actually, hindi ako. The Bible said it. There are times that I, I don't want to speak. There are times I don't want to go to the table and talk. There are times James just wants what he wants. And I have to be reminded, James, that is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. Ibig sabihin, galing sa jablo yan. Ano bang gusto ng jablo? The Bible says he's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy God's plan in your life. Mag-asawa, may tampuhan kayo, sit at the table, iron it out, talk. Talk. Clear it out. Pastor, if I clear it out, baka lumabas ako yung may kasalanan. Do it anyway. Because that is living in wisdom. Peace loving. Full of mercy. It gets harder as we go along. Ang totoong heavenly wisdom. Though. Full of mercy. Alam niyo yung mercy? Mercy is a willingness to forgive even when they don't deserve to be forgiven. Bakit, Pastor? You know what? Let me just remind you. Jesus forgave you and I when we didn't deserve forgiving. Hindi lang the Bible said, just do, he just said, give mercy. Do good deeds. Pastor, pinatawad ko na, ililibre ko pa ng fish ball. Mm -hmm. Pati squid ball, chicken ball. Lahat ng ball. At French fries. At kung gusto na Sunday, Sunday. No favoritism. No favoritism. You know what is no favoritism? It's me, kami, tsaka kayo. Unspiritual, evil, demonic. No favoritism. Kami ng friends ko versus kayo ng friends nyo. Living carelessly in the field. Have you ever seen a church divided? It's terrible. Living carelessly. If you hear a Christian that says, 
I don't want to talk about it anymore. Earthly, unspiritual, demonic. Pastor, next week, anong topic mo? Mabigat tong Colossians. Kala nyo, simple lang to. May dalawa pa tayo. Huh? If you've ever heard a Christian who says, I just don't want to talk about it anymore, ayoko nang pag-usapan, but they're not willing to be okay, then that's earthly and spiritual, demonic. Don't side with those people. Don't side with people who don't want to talk at the table, who want, don't want to admit responsibility, or they will only admit responsibility if you admit responsibility. That's my favorite thing. It's like being a child, but I'm bata. Magsasorry lang ako, magsasorry ka na. O nagsorry lang ako, dapat magsorry ka. Ano ba? Ano ba? Sa mga bahay, sa bahay nga namin, bawal yun eh. Sa bahay namin, delikado magsorry kasi tanong sa'yo, bakit? Even I. If I, if I apologize to my wife, babe, sorry kasi, gato, gato. she'll say, why? That's where I melt and die. No favoritism. Bakit, pastor? Because favoritism is guided by favors. Did you hear me? That means you have made a decision based on the favors someone has done for you. I'm siding with you because of the favors you've given to me. That's why our political system doesn't work. Not because we need a socialist government or a democratic government or parliamentary government. Our political system doesn't work because it's a padrino system. system. We run because of favors done for us. Can I ask you to analyze your decisions lately? Huh? Listen. Listen. Decisions lately. Decisions lately. How have you been making decisions lately? Are you siding with one side or the other? Come on, be honest. Kasi, Pastor, they are not playing favorites. Then are you willing to sit down at the table? Have you sought clarity? If you haven't, then that's earthy, unspiritual, demonic. Always sincere. How do you determine, Pastor? That's the hard part. Your sincerity? How do I know if, it's, if the people I'm talking with are sincere? It's not hard. If they're willing to be pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield to others, full of mercy and good deeds, shows no favoritism, this is just icing on the cake. How can you tell if a person is sincere? There's a list. And we wonder why the church is ineffective. And we wonder why the church doesn't work. And we wonder why things don't get accomplished. Si daming ganito. Ganito, pastor. That's a hard thing to do. No. Can you go back to my point? That's why it says a divine influence Asabe, led upon the heart by the Holy Spirit. I pray that your prayer today would be, Lord, this moment, at this time in my life, lead my heart. Not lead my will. Not lead galito or galito. Just lead my heart. I know some of you are probably saying, but pastor, you don't understand how much I've been hurt. Holy Spirit, lead my heart. Pastor, you don't understand some of the stuff that's been said against me. Holy Spirit, lead my heart. Pastor, di mo na intindihan. 
There's some nasty things going on. Holy Spirit, lead my heart. There's one thing I've understood, 26 years of ministry, one thing I've understood clearly. You can't fight with a man who wants to talk peace. You can't fight with a man who wants to be peaceable. You remedial. Who wants to sit down and no matter how long it takes and how hard it gets and how difficult it will be, kasi natin to hanggang maging tama to lahat. Ang hirap awayin ng tao na gustong ayusin ang lahat ng bagay. Ang hirap pakipag-away sa tao na kahit na pinapakita sa iyo yung mga mali mo, andun pa rin siya nakaupo. Hindi yung maalis. Na kahit pinamumukha na sa'yo, kung ano yung mga kamalian mo, he's still sitting there and wants to speak. It's hard to fight with a man like that. Yung bako, sige, umalis ka. O ayaw pag-usapan, okay, basta ako nandito lang ako. Basta ako nandito lang ako. I, man, you, you know me, I, I'm a person who doesn't shy from confrontation. That's my problem, it's always been. But man, one of the, the few times that I'm willing to sit on the table, I can tell you from an honest fact that that's from the Holy Spirit. I've had to say, Lord, James wants war. Okay. Bragging aside, I'm a pretty good warrior. Okay. Verbally and physically. Boy, oh boy, that doesn't accomplish anything. It destroys too many things. Dami na si Things around me. Sira. People around me get damaged. People around me get hurt. But you can't fight with a man who wants to sit down. And even if things hurt, things take time, things get to, he's willing to sit down. Tapos ayusin natin to, ayusin natin to, ayusin natin to. Is willing to take responsibility, willing to yield, willing to give mercy, willing to ask for mercy, willing to give forgiveness, willing to ask for forgiveness. May hirap awayin ng taong ganun. May hirap. May hirap. In fact, kung nasa mali ka, nakakainis yun. Nakakainis yun. Kasi the people who will say, ano, ganun na lang? Ganun na lang? If we are unforgiving, like just like that? Ganun lang, ganun lang, ganun lang. <laughs> Uh, lahat tayo guilty na doon, di ba? Ha? Huh? Yun lang, ganun lang. When, when we do that, we become unforgiving. No? When we raise the standard that high, we raise ourselves higher. Tama? And no matter what they do, will not, be, will not make us happy. And we become slaves to our bitterness. Have you ever seen a person who's a slave to his bitterness? It's a terrible waste. Have you ever seen a person who's made decisions from favoritism? Terrible. Bakit? Kasi sumasabay lang sa agos. Hindi naman yung naiintindihan. Have you ever seen a person who doesn't want to come to the table and fix things? Terrible. Bakit? Kasi there's an important thing that Apostle Paul was trying to point out. Something we lose apart from testimony. Pag hindi tayo nabubuhay ng tama. It's four letters. Remember, Apostle Paul says, For which I say, and with this I close, For this, for which I write you, and I am in chains. Notice what it says, Make the most of the time. That's what he says. That's the key word, time. When we are unforgiving, when we are not peace-loving, when we don't want to come to the table, tapos makipag-ayos, when we waste our time quarreling, when we become unmerciful, pag tayo unforgiving, pag tayo backbiting, pag tayo bitter, full of jealousy and deceit, there will be time, praise God, na maaayos yun, that will be fixed. Eventually, one way or the other, but remember the emphasis of Apostle Paul. Uh, redeem the time. Bakit, Pastor? Because when, listen to me, husbands, Listen to me, wives. Listen to me, friends. Listen to me, family members. Listen to me, church members. Listen to me. There's something that we lose when we waste our time living 
Not like that. You know what we lose? We lose time. Time wasted. Sinayang for bitterness, jealousy, favoritism, unmerciful, gossiping, huh? talking, fighting, quarreling. We lose time. And when we lose that time and we waste it, we don't get that back. Kahit maayos yan, hindi nyo mababawi yung oras na iginugol nyo sa bagay na yan. Mawawalan kayo ng oras, panahon, minuto, bagay na malalaman yung ginto pag wala na siya. Yung pagkakataong ganun. And then you will say, I wasted that time. Kasi, the fields are white, ready na siya eh. And if they fall, we lose time. You know what the church needs today? You know what the Christian needs to do today? Is to go back to the Word. And analyze the way we've made decisions lately. Analyze the way we have handled our decisions lately. Analyze how we have related to each other lately. Analyze how we have related to outsiders lately. Kasi, pag nawala na yung time, hindi na mababawi yun. That's lost time. Lost time. Live wisely. 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 Dear Jesus, we praise you and thank you for your words. Sometimes it's not comfortable. Sometimes we think it's going a certain way. But Lord, you've taught us, dear Father, from your word, from the writings of Paul, how we ought to live with each other, how we ought to live amongst outsiders. Lord, Jesus, help us to look today to maximize the time that we have to live in wisdom, to live wisely, to judge ourselves, Lord, based on your word. Kasi, Lord, totoo naman pinakita mo na sa amin yung mga decisions namin lately. If we deny that, then we become accountable to you, Panginoon. Pagka po namin nagdahilan pa kami, ano pa sinabi namin, then Lord, we become incredibly accountable to you because like you said, we will be like the book of James to look in the mirror and see the image and turn back and forget what we saw. Lord, help us this day, at this moment, Lord, to be the people you want us to be, to be the brother, the sister, the husband, the wife, the child that you want us to be. Lord, help us to be that kind of a people. Lord, it will take some difficulty in ironing out things and fixing things and laying things out and clarifying things, but Lord, they are worth the time because they are according to your will. Kahit mahirap, Panginoon, hindi sayang na panahon kasi po, ito po ay angkop sa iyong kalooban, Panginoon, ang pagsasaayos ng bagay-bagay. Ipakita mo sa amin, Panginoon, na kapag ka kami po ay hindi handa na umupo sa lamesa at makita kung kami may kamalian, kami ay ganito o anong dapat gawin, Panginoon, then we become evil, demonic, unspiritual, earthly, that's not what we want to be. Because we are supposed to be witnesses for you. Witnesses of your work in our life. Witnesses of the work of the Holy Spirit in us. And I pray, dear God, that you would teach us, Lord, to be that kind of a people today. Would you stand with me this morning? My prayer this morning, and I hope it will be your prayer as well, and that is to say, God, dear God, Teach me, Lord, to be guided by the Spirit. There are people in this auditorium this morning. There's some decisions you need to make in the next several days. Some of you made some decisions to nakaraang mga ara, mga linggo, mga buwan. And right now, maybe hindi masyadong masaya, hindi masyadong ano. Naalaman mo na, teka, pambira, mali pala yun. Mali pala yung attitude ko. Mali pala yung ugali ko. Mali pala yung paraan. Akala ko tama ako ah. Maybe tama ka sa umpisa, pero the way you care that it's wrong, the way you care that it's wrong, I pray that your prayer today will be, Lord Jesus, 
Holy Spirit, I want to live in wisdom, to be guided, to be guided, that my heart will be guided in your wisdom. Teach me, Lord, what to do from here. Teach me, Lord, what to do from here. If that is your prayer, it's your prayer. Would you come to the altar with me this morning? And let's come and pray. And let's say, Lord Jesus, I have some decisions I need to make. Well, Lord, I've made some decisions over the last couple of weeks or months. Let me be guided by the Holy Spirit. Pastor, that's going to take a lot of humility. Guided by the Holy Spirit. Pastor, that's going to take a lot of giving up. Yung mga, yung mga bitterness ko. Guided by the Holy Spirit. Guided by the Holy Spirit. Pastor, that means I would have to give way. Guided by the Holy Spirit. Wisdom. Pastor Papanian, e ganito ganyan. I just want to ask you, where have your decisions brought you over the last several days or weeks? Magulo ba? Well, that's because. Kasi pastor, tama o mali. That's not what I'm saying. But wag mo, wag mo justify. Wag ka mag-justify. But rather understand. San, san dinala yung decisions mo lately? Saan? 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 Magulo ba? Magulo. Okay, magulo, Pastor. Yung bank, ikaw ba? At yung mga kasama mo, family members mo, willing ba silang maupo sa lamesa? Pag hindi, lino ng Bible eh. Pag hindi, linaw eh. Linaw. 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 And that means yung kosa mo will be miserably failing. Coming to the table, doing right, it may require a lot of humility, maybe pain. Pastor, paano pag i-reject ako? <clears throat> Ulit. Hindi pwedeng magkamali at hindi pwede ma-deny, hindi pwedeng masira ang isang tao na gustong gumawa ng tama. Itataas ng Panginoon yan. Atas ng Panginoon. God will raise them up. 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 Kung kinakailangan mo pang i-justify yung situations and decisions mo, automatically mali ka na kagad. That's based on scripture. Lino eh. I wish pwede natin bali-bali ko eh according to what we like. But hindi ganon. Hindi ganon. Sobrang lino. Sobrang lino. So clear. Maybe you're here today you're saying, Pastor, you know, I want that kind of a change to happen in my life. How, how does that happen? How does the Holy Spirit take control of my life? Very easy. Just pray a very simple prayer. Sabi mo, Lord Jesus, at this moment, sa panahong ito sa buhay ko, Panginoon, Lord, forgive me of my sins and forgive me of my pride. Patawarin mo ko, Lord, change my life. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. I want to live a life na ganoon. Gusto ko mabuhay na may gabay ng banal na Espiritu sa buhay ko simula ngayong oras na ito. Kaibigan, ganoon lang. It's, it's, it's actually that simple, my friend. I pray that you keep praying that today. Dear fathers, your people are here this morning. You understand us. You understand. Sometimes, Lord, ang hirap to give way. Ang hirap, Lord, to come to the table. Ang hirap, Lord, kasi... We also know that we will have some responsibilities, Panginoon. But Lord, we want to be guided by the Holy Spirit. We want to live in wisdom. We want to live responsibly, Lord, sa, at, sa mga tao sa paligid namin. So that we could impact them for you. So that we could make the right impression, Lord, for you. So Lord, I pray that you would hear every prayer of your child, of your children today. As they say, Holy Spirit, I want to be guided by you. Ipakita mo po sa amin, Panginoon, the things that need to change, the things that we have kept in our hearts, the things, Panginoon, na dapat namin ibigay sa iyo, the things, Panginoon, dapat isantabi, the things, Panginoon, na dapat ipagpaliban, Panginoon. Rather, help us to be a people who will seek your approval, Panginoon, sa lahat ng bagay. Yung hahanapin, Panginoon, yung nais mo, yung gusto mo. Lord Jesus, you understand that above everything else. And so, Father, I pray that you would speak, Lord, continually today in the lives of all these people here. 
And we will praise you and thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.